in the Christian Bible Lands tour group. This is nuts! It's interesting how Yahweh allows these things to happen with modern excavation equipment to prove that his people have been everywhere all the time. Yeah, they were, they were. Wow. Good so comment! Okay. Um, so this is a mixture of newer and older scripts. It is a mixture of Hebrew and non-Hebrew scripts. And then the way they're formed is inconsistent. Like the stroke orders are not always the same, which is an indication this is not someone who is trained in this language. This is not someone who knows this language. They're writing the same characters in different ways each time they write them. This artifact was not found in a controlled archaeological dig. And whenever something sensational like this pops up outside of these very controlled conditions, we should be very cautious. Mormonism with the Murph. We're already seeing explorers church history and the church's truth claims. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So there's been a lot of recent news, lots of different videos, podcasts, uh, reacting and responding to the recent discovery of gold plates found in Saudi Arabia. Are these genuine, authentic gold plates or is this just a modern hoax? Does this support the narrative of the Book of Mormon and Lehi leaving Jerusalem, them riding upon gold plates? and supporting the plausibility of ancient Israelites writing a couple of thousand years ago upon gold plates. This has certainly caused a lot of excitement and interest for believers in the Book of Mormon, but it's also sparked a lot of controversy. So I want to explore what we know so far and the different responses and reactions that have been given to these plates. In this video, I'm going to try to feature in what different reactions have been from different people on different platforms, and then I'll sort of throw my two cents towards the end. So there's a gold book supposedly found in Saudi Arabia that has Hebrew inscriptions, temple imagery and symbols, and dated to around 2000 years ago. A Christian tour group visited the Arabian Peninsula, said they were contacted by some men there who said they found a stone vault containing metal plates and other artifacts. And one of the artifacts was a small, artifact of gold plates with gold sheet that was bound together by rings. And Miles Jones and his partner talked about the discovery on, on a Jewish show, Shabbat Night Live, and they show pictures of the plates. They show seals stamped in it, metal containing menorahs and other symbols from the temple in Jerusalem. And not only do they talk about this set of plates, but also a set of lead plates and also sort of like a library or like archive of plates that were found. So I first came across this video when Hayden and Dave Butler on the Stick of Joseph uh, played the part of the video and gave their reaction to it as well. And they talked about the similarities between these plates that were found in Saudi Arabia and how this might corroborate Lehi leaving Jerusalem, them carrying plates with them, riding upon gold plates. And also Dave Butler has a recent book, well, a book which is coming out, but he's done a lot of research on temple imagery and symbolism coming from the Israelite temple, making its way into the Book of Mormon. A chamber going down in there, and uh, they discovered, we saw the pictures, there was a lot of gold artifact. <laughs> okay, dude. <laughs> that sounds an awful lot like the description that Joseph and Oliver Cowdery gave. I did not have on my bingo card that the plain and precious things would be revealed through Shabbat dude, this Night guy. Live <laughs> and, a, and, and a, Christian, a Christian Bible Lands tour group. Okay. This is nuts! It's interesting how Yahweh allows these things to happen with modern excavation equipment. <laughs> to prove that his people have been everywhere all yeah, the time. They were, they were. Wow. Good so comment! <laughs> as to why some are gold, some are lead. I would guess it would be more important. So the more precious there. books, so the, the, the creme de la creme stories were in the gold one. It may be the clips notes of the lead books. Okay, yep. <laughs> Oh, the summary. There's a longer version of history on the brass plates, but here I'm writing the most, the more precious stuff and a summary of my of my reign and ministry. They also highlight some correspondences between these plates and this artifact with the Book of Mormon. This is it being written by someone of a priestly class, fleeing from Jerusalem, traveling through Arabia. The plates being written around 2,000 years ago. Now there's a mixture of languages upon the plates that many of all the symbols and imagery is related to the Israelite temple, particularly like imagery of Jacob's ladder, the menorah, the tree of life motif. You have a menorah right oh, there in the- Oh, hello. And what's on the facing page there, Hayden? A giant tree. A giant tree with three branches on one side and three branches on the other. Just Bone, like the menorah. Just like this. Almost like showing that the menorah was a representation of the tree and almost like the tree of life played a very central role to temple worship, almost like Lehi was showing us a temple vision in the Tree of Life vision. Absolutely. <laughs> and indeed, that little tree on the right, what is it between, Hayden? It is between, oh my gosh, it is between two pillars. It is between two pillars. It is as if one is standing in front of the temple, looking into the temple, and the two pillars are Yaquin and Boaz, and you can see the menorah, which mm. is the Tree of Life, 
in the depths. And they discussed on Shabbat Night Live that the record inscriptions that was done the gold plates is likely because it was more precious but that there are other plates other lead plates there so they're really highlighting the connection between the imagery and the symbolism on these plates with things in the book of mormon and just this notion of ancient israelites ancient israelites riding upon metal plates okay this guy's talking about oh we found all these plates with the menorah and the tree of life on them what I'm interested in is the precious information. Yeah. Right? yeah. That's exactly what 1 Nephi 11 <laughs> says, is that the tree of life is precious above all. all. And 1 Nephi 13 says that the, the plain and precious things were taken were out. Contained but, in the... but they're going to come back. Oh, dear. Right? Oh, my gosh. I did not have on my bingo card that the plain and precious things would be revealed through Shabbat Dude, this Night guy. Live. <laughs> right? And a, and, and a Christian Bible Lands tour group. Like, <laughs> that's wild. This dude. is nuts. It's, I can certainly see why people would jump on this. Is this seems like evidence corroborating and supporting the Book of Mormon. And whenever I first watched it, I thought, this is actually really cool. And they also said either this is true or it almost seems like this is a prank or a hoax there. It's always prank David Butler specifically. If, like, why would they take the time to beat gold? learn an ancient hebrew language yep. then carve it into this especially when they're muslims and they don't really care about jews at all right, right. It, it look i was watching this the, this morning the first time and i and i just thought okay either this is like the most amazing thing kill me now yeah. i think I, I think i typed that to you guys like <laughs> yes, three times did. like or it's like the most amazing prank ever and it's like directed at mormons and it's yeah. like somebody somebody who knows someone an awful in saudi lot. arabia someone learns paleo hebrew someone goes and studies enough to go you know what we shouldn't put the shield of david on there we should put a whole bunch of tree of life uh -huh. like someone knows the book of mormon well enough to do this uh most like impossibly good fake ever yeah or is real or it's and real. i'm pretty sure it's real <laughs> and at first we were like oh yeah there's a couple cool things after recording and watching this again it is much more insane than we even thought guys the Book of Mormon is true, and all the naysayers are slowly losing their grasp on all of their arguments that make it sound like we're crazy to believe that the Book of Mormon could have happened. Dude, dude gold plates, priestly minority records, fleeing through Arabia, uh, uh, te temple The symbolism. Tree of Life. The Tree of Life. Dude, it is all here, it, and this is like a bunch of Gentiles. This is like a bunch of Gentiles who were like, oh, we found this in construction sites in Saudi Arabia. This is going to blow your minds. So stick around. And, and one thing that we want to say as well, um, share this with so many people. Guys, we need to share this. This is insane. This video that we're watching is on a channel called Shabbat Night Live. Uh, I think it's a Jewish channel. It has about 9,000 views. So nobody knows about this. And this is the first time that this stuff is being shared publicly, as far as we understand. So this has to be shared in all of our circles. And their video, it's gone over 100,000 views. And some of the they're getting really excited about these findings and how this corroborates and this bolsters the claims of the Book of Mormon of ancient Israelites riding upon metal plates, fleeing from Jerusalem, all this temple symbolism and imagery, supporting the plausibility of the coming forth of the Book of Mormon and the claim that it was written by ancient authors upon gold plates, if this is in fact something that was historically done. Some say this confirms the Book of Mormon and that the critics will now be confounded as more truth is springing out, out of the earth supporting the divine origin of the Book of Mormon. And you can see there's been lots of people who have been sharing this and making comments how this is some like cool new evidence. However, it appears very likely that these artifacts that have been found could likely be forgeries. No! It can't be! No! 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 And that their provenance, their authenticity, are being severely called into question by scholars. I'm going to share what Dan McClellan had to say on more book reviews as well as Jasmine on Scripture Central. Uh, then we, we're turning the page again. We've got more imagery. This is a uh, profile view of a face. Looks like they've got a beard. They've got a diadem on. Uh, we've got more inscriptions. We've got a menorah here. <clears throat> and then we're back to that. And then there are other things that uh, were discovered with it. Again, you've got the, the grapevine border here. You've got the menorah inside of this border. And mm -hmm. I think they said this well, was supposed, yeah, they say name of house of Yah. Shem mm -hmm. looks like name at the top there. Uh, this is supposed to be, I guess this is supposed to be, if we take this as a, as a bet, and that is a tav, 
uh, then we're reading right to left on the top, and then we're reading left to right, coming down the left side, and then they want this to be uh, ya. That is a backwards yod on uh, on the top up here. I don't see how they get a hey out of that. That looks more like an upside down shim, um, or uh, <laughs> what did I say shim? <laughs> uh, shin, similar to what's going on up here. So okay. Um, so this is a mixture of newer and older scripts. It is a mixture of Hebrew and non-Hebrew scripts, and then the way they're formed is inconsistent. Like the stroke orders are not always the same which is an indication this is not someone who is trained in this language. This is not someone who knows this language. They're writing the same characters in different ways each time they write them. Okay. Which and is that these also seem very similar to an artifact that was produced around 11 years ago called the Jordan Codices on lead plates, which seems to borrow a lot of the same symbols. And so um, that's all fine and good, but I want to share images of the Jordan lead Codices, which were publicized by a man named David Elkington back in um, April, May of 2011. And you're going to see some striking similarities. Okay. All right. So we will just pull that. Okay. So similarly, we're dealing with bound lead books. You have the exact same style of letters uh, where you've got a mix of Nabataean and Old Hebrew and the square script, and it is inconsistent. Um, you've got some things that are backwards. So for instance, uh, you probably can't see it very well. Um, but you also have the same iconography. You've got these grapevine borders along the side. You've got a menorah here. The, the arms of the menorah are straight rather than curved. Uh, you've got a little starburst okay. uh, image here. And there are, find some other examples. So here we've got other uh, menorah imagery. We've got, and, and they came out with uh, upwards of 70 images of these plates. And the lettering is identical. It's, you know, the orientations are mixed up. The, the stroke orders are mixed up. The combination of different scripts is mixed up. Uh, here we have um, something that they highlighted in some of the other imageries. Uh, you've got pillars, temple pillars. Uh, you've got menorahs inside of uh, borders. Same thing going on here. Uh, this is one of the, uh, the same plates. And, and then, just, just so people understand, Dan, I guess what we want to, what you want to put across here is that these lead plates, the consensus is that these are, these are forgeries. And, these are and, forgeries. and so are you saying like this is proven 100% these are forgeries? Is there any scholars that give any credence to these, these at all? There are, there are a couple of, there's, there's one scholar. Uh, who was associated with the group that came out with the, the Jordan Codices, Margaret Barker. Uh, a lot of Latter-day Saints know who Margaret Barker is, who was endorsing the authenticity uh, of these things. I don't know where she stands today, uh, but I don't think there are many scholars who would offer anything other than a flat rejection of the authenticity. And I'm going to show one of the reasons that we know, okay, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that these are forgeries. And this and this image right here is uh, the start of this. First, we have the same starburst symbols. We have the same um, stylistic borders here. We have the menorah with uh, inscriptions around it. And we have this interesting, uh, looks like a date palm. Now, these are some images uh, in 2011 when the Jordan Light Codices first came out. Some friends of mine and I who are scholars, we put our heads together uh, to say, what, how can we get the word out that these are forgeries? How can we demonstrate to the world that, that uh, before things get too far? Because misinformation, the, the famous quote that I'm going to butcher is that a lie travels around the world before the truth can get um, out of bed or get its socks on or something like that. Yep. And we just wanted to try to stem the tide of that to mitigate any kind of damage that this misinformation and these forgeries were going to do. Um, but it started in 2011. Uh, I think it was like a, the last day of April, uh, or maybe it was the last day of March, I don't remember. But this man named David Elkington published his press release, says, we discovered 70 golden tablets in Jordan and they're first century, they're Christian, and they're covered in these inscriptions. And one of the scholars said it means I will walk in perfection. And it's actually this inscription up at the top that a, uh, a scholar who I have personally been in touch with, who said, please don't ever use my name because I don't want to be associated with these. I said, I guess if you wanted to force some kind of sense on this, you might squint at this and read it as I will walk in perfection. Uh, but he has since said, don't quote me on that. I don't want to ever hear about these things ever again. I don't think that that is actually what that says. And, okay. and I've got a blog posts where I talk about how it, it, it can't really mean that. But um, when that news first came out, uh, somebody you and I both know, Daniel Peterson, shared on a message board an email that was making the rounds from a classicist at Oxford named Peter Thoneman. And when this news came out, Peter Thoneman shared with an email list a bunch of other um, of scholars saying, this person reached out to me a year ago with photographs of plates asking for me to authenticate them. And I was able to demonstrate beyond a shadow of a doubt that at least one of the plates that was a part of that group was a modern forgery. And this is the plates that uh, he was able to show us a modern forgery, although let's see, I need to see the top of it. Okay, so uh, I don't know how well you can see this, but you can see there's an inscription at the top. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this is Greek. Yeah. And uh, Peter was like, uh, this doesn't make much sense. And it seems to be because whoever wrote this could not distinguish uh, a Greek lambda from a Greek alpha, because mm -hmm. in this particular script, they're actually pretty close. They're, they're difficult to distinguish. And if, you're, if you don't know the language, it's easier to mix them up. And he was actually able to track down the source of this inscription. Okay. By replacing the, the misunderstood letters with the actual letters, he found out that this is an inscription, a funerary inscription from a um, that is on display in a museum in Amman, Jordan. Okay. And he also showed that this inscription begins in the middle of a word and ends in the middle of a word because somebody copied it down off of that funerary inscription, but didn't understand the language well enough to know where the word began and the word ended because they didn't put spaces in between the words. Uh -huh. And so very clearly that is 
of modern forgery. The stick of Joseph did propose, maybe this could have been written in some sort of code that scholars just don't understand. But the thing that seemed quite strange to me is the condition that it's in. It's in such good condition, it looks pristine, doesn't seem to be any wear and tear or corrosion, and it does look actually, in hindsight, watching it back, kind of like it was made by a machine. The stick of Joseph give their reaction after speaking to a couple of Hebrew scholars as well. But they also share that even if these things, if they are authentic, then this seems to favor the Book of Mormon. But they also share why even if it's not, that this provides plausibility. All right, welcome everybody back to the Sick of Joseph. Uh, but we have yep. new information, and we appreciate everybody that has uh, made comments. There's been some mean ones in there. But I special love what the mean ones. Bring mean, the mean ones I don't actually fun. read the mean ones. In fact, I don't really read the comments unless someone points them out to me, who I, who I think has my best interest at heart. Um, yeah, in addition to new information, because you've had a couple of interesting calls, and I've been on some of them, mm -hmm. um, uh, I want to uh, provide some further explanation. I want to ex explicate some of the things we said two days ago at length. Yeah, no, and, and that's the thing is like we don't even need to. We, so yesterday, just so you guys know, I so yesterday, just so you guys know, I I talked to both Dr. Jones himself. I had a good conversation, and then uh, I talked to two other Hebrew scholars who don't believe that they're real, um, and we just barely you know, got off a call with one, who really awesome, cordial dude, uh, very knowledgeable as well, and he explained clearly why he believes that they're fraudulent. Okay, all of it. So I got like an 11 point correspondence, okay? So this is, this is, the, this is the Lehigh scenario. Okay, in 11 points of pretty, I think, uh, detailed and specific correspondence, the story that the buyer tells, right, in a combination of the artifacts the buyer presents and what it says about provenance, is in 11 points the Lehigh story. Now, one, why would they tell that story? Let, let's assume, okay, two scenarios here. If these documents are genuine, okay, then actual books on gold plates have been found, and, and the story of them being found is the Lehigh scenario. Should we be excited about that? Man, we should be excited about that, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. Let's assume that the seller are forgers, though, okay? So they, they, they concoct the documents, and they, get to, and, they, and they put together the story, and they go to the buyer, and they tell the Lehigh scenario is the story for why you should come up with probably at the end they're going to be asking for hundreds of thousands or, or millions or tens of millions of dollars. I don't, mm -hmm. It sounds like there's lots of documents, so I think they're going to ask for lots of money. Yeah. So, which, by the way, is normal. This happens all the time, and this is how antiquities are discovered. They're found, they're sold, they get to museums eventually. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, why would you tell that story if you're the seller? Well, the answer is you can. The only reason you would tell that story is because you expect the buyer to find it plausible. Mm -hmm. You are trying to tell a plausible story of why these artifacts exist, and your plausible story is the 11-point Lehigh scenario about priestly families going out in the desert, riding on gold plates, fleeing their political enemies, having Egyptian cultural background, all mm -hmm. that stuff. However, if these are if these are definitively found to be forgeries, I still don't really think this is good evidence in favor for the Book of Mormon. Now, if these were found in a controlled archaeological dig and their provenance was found to be genuine, then I think this would be really interesting. But it just seems like these random guys just reveal these artifacts to them, and they're just going off based on the story. Uh, this is what Jasmine has to say from Scripture Central, and of course Scripture Central is a very apologetic organization. They're trying to show forth evidence for the Book of Mormon. So you would feel if there was some plausibility to this, they would probably jump on it. But she also shares some of the reasons why these are likely not what they claim to be. The internet's been ablaze these last couple days because of a gold book purportedly found in Saudi Arabia with Hebrew inscriptions on them. I get why people are excited about this. I mean, they look like the gold plates of the Book of Mormon. It seems almost too good to be true. And that's because it is too good to be true. But on this particular item, there are some pretty major red flags that should give us pause before uncritically embracing this gold book as authentic. I reached out to friends who are a lot more experienced in Middle Eastern antiquities, and it does indeed appear that this is most likely a modern forgery, not a genuine ancient artifact. So I'm gonna break down how we can tell this is a forgery and why as Latter-day Saints, we really need to be very careful about how we evaluate Book of Mormon evidence so that we don't undercut our own argument because there is excellent evidence for the Book of Mormon. This is just not it. So first we need to address the origins of this artifact. This artifact was not found in a controlled archeological dig. And whenever something sensational like this pops up outside of these very controlled conditions, we should be very cautious. When objects are found in an archeological site, experts are there on site to help determine how it's being uncovered, what's in the surrounding dirt, where it is located in the stratigraphy layers so that they can better understand the context and the provenance or the origins of this artifact. When someone's just pulling an artifact out of a bag, we have no way of knowing its origins, where it came from, or any of the context that would help us make sense of this artifact. In this case, Miles Jones was the one who was shown these plates, 
by unnamed individuals at an undisclosed location. And apparently it was just like pulled out of a bag. So we have no way of knowing where it came from. And the fact is there's been a thriving trade in fake antiquities in the Middle East for years. Plenty of scandals have even involved serious academic and national institutions. There are hundreds of individuals who are trying to sell Jews and Christians crude fakes with nonsense Hebrew inscriptions and what they think are Jewish symbols for sums of money as high as like tens of millions of dollars. So there's absolutely motive for someone to want to fabricate a fake Jewish artifact like this. The style of embossing or stamping also appears to be modern, like the clusters of designs and the motifs, especially the stars and the random dot clusters. This is really, really common on these kinds of fakes. This Israeli collector on his website even has a picture of one of these forgeries with an embossed seal that is an identical match to one of the embossed seals on the gold book. The menorah designs that are found on this gold book also appear to be copied from the Arch of Titus, and that specific design appears on a lot of other fake artifacts. Yet all of these forgeries always tend to copy this most famous iconic depiction of the menorah, and so it's a little suspicious. And this one's a clincher for me. It's the actual Hebrew inscriptions on these plates. So the letters here are noticeably amateurish. There's like random gibberish Hebrew phrases. It seems like this was done by someone who didn't really understand Hebrew very well. And there's mixing of different scripts. And a lot of these scripts are actually poor imitations of modern 20th century Hebrew cursive. Mixing scripts on an inscription itself is not necessarily a deal breaker. We do see some of that going on in the ancient world. But using uh, later scripts that wouldn't have existed at the time the artifact originated is a bit of an anachronism that is just not going to fly. According to Miles Jones, he believes that this artifact should be dating to like 2,000 years ago, and that just doesn't line up with the scripts that are being portrayed on the plates here. And then there's just the shape and the state of this artifact itself. I mean, look at how regular the plates are with these perfectly straight edges and these perfectly rounded corners, almost like a credit card, indicating that it might be machine made. Even the perfectly round binder ring shape looks like it could have been machine fabricated in modern times. Initial analysis suggests that these plates are not similar to any known genuine artifacts, but instead they do bear a striking resemblance to a number of fraudulent Jordanian artifacts, including a controversial set of lead books that many experts believe are also fake. The Arabian Gold Book wasn't presented as a standalone item. Instead, it was accompanied by a number of lead books, which were apparently all archived together, and yet these lead plates seem to have been artificially aged the same way that scholars believe that the Jordanian fakes were. And also the scale of the size of these plates matches those other fakes really well. So the fact that the provenance of these artifacts, they weren't found in a controlled professional archaeological dig. We don't know the context. Experts can't determine how it was uncovered, how it was discovered. We don't know the origins of where it came from. And that there's other examples of fake fake artifacts that have been made from the Middle East or trying to depict Middle East artifacts and that there's a motive for people to create these artifacts to sell them for money. And that some of the symbols or imagery on there seem to be very similar if not identical to other artifacts which are known forgeries. And that the Hebrew inscriptions look quite amateur and a mixture of different Hebrew writing scripts dated to different times using later Hebrew script with earlier ones. Uh, as Dan McClellan said and other scholars that it kind of looks like gib gibberish. Now, maybe it isn't case closed. The stick of Joseph seemed to think the jury's out. And then we, ha we have some other information that we got from that conversation that we'd like to share with you guys because at the end of the day, the jury is out. Some people will immediately say, and, and that's a, a majority of the negative comments are, these are obvious fakes. Right. And what we're going to show here today is, could they be fakes? Possibly, and, for sure. They and, could be fakes. But that doesn't necessarily get rid of their value, as you're going to point out here. Yeah. And, uh, they also could not be fakes. The jury is out, I guess yeah. is what we're saying. And the jury is likely to be out for a long time. This mm -hmm. was, um, uh, look, it, it's easy to remember, uh, to forget this, but the Dead Sea Scrolls are discovered in 1947, but the first complete publication of a Dead Sea Scroll is in the late 70s. Okay, these really? things. I didn't yes. know that long. And, and there were people who denounced the Dead Sea Scrolls as they started Early showing on. up as obvious forgeries. So we're there's going to be a debate and a discussion, um, and it will continue for a while. And I seem to lean more towards, I think the evidence is quite strong that these are modern fake artifacts. Of course, I do not have the expertise to be able to analyze or determine if authentic or not, but the provenance of the document, the, the symbols and the imagery seeming like it's forged from other similar artifacts and plates which turned out to be not authentic, and the fact that there's a mixture of early and late Hebrew scripts that kind of seem to be gibberish, 
I think really do call into question the authenticity of this artifact. I think critics will be loving this as well because I think Larry scenes got carried away. We've jumped the gun uh, before verifying this, and now that it looks likely that this is just a modern fake, this is sort of like a backhand in your face for all of us promoting how such strong evidence for the Book of Mormon, which is undeniable. And even if this artifact were shown to be proven true, it's proven genuine and authentic. It obviously wouldn't mean the Book of Mormon is what it claims to be. And likewise, even if it's shown to be a fake or a forgery, it doesn't undermine or invalidate the authenticity of the Book of Mormon and the gold plates. I've discussed with Neil Rapley as well, comparing the gold plates and the Book of Mormon to other gold to other plate artifacts found throughout the ancient world. Although this one would have been really cool because this is found in the Middle East. Obviously metal plates found a couple of thousand years ago in the Middle East, there being both gold plates and lead plates and like a library of plates found together. And with all this temple imagery and symbolism, that would have been really cool in favor for the Book of Mormon. But unfortunately, it appears like it's not a genuine artifact. But I'm interested to see what's gonna, what are the further developments. Thanks for watching. Enjoy conference weekend. Thanks everyone for watching this episode. If you've enjoyed it, please give it a like, share it with others who might benefit, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future content. You can also listen to these episodes on podcast form on Anchor, Spotify, and you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Check out my website for more content, personal blog, and more. And if you care to donate to support me, you can via my PayPal or Patreon or through the website. And you can also give donations via YouTube through Super Chats. Thanks for watching Mormonism with the Murph. Take care. Bye-bye.